Hey guys, welcome to a tutorial for GTX 1070 and GTX 1080 Founders Edition Power Modding. So why do we need power modding and what is power modding? First of all, let's take a look at this screenshot where I was um, using the GTX 1080 Founders Edition and you can see I was running Fermark. And uh, if you take a look at the afterburner window, you can see the power limit was already set to 120%. And you can see the core clock was also set to plus 220 megahertz. Also, I adjusted the fan speed to 100% just to make sure that the card is uh, running a little bit colder and not, not too hot uh, during Fermark. So if you check the sensor um, GPU Z window on the left, you can see the core clock was running at around 1900 megahertz and the GPU temperature was around 70 degrees. And now if you look at the power consumption, it says 116% TDP. So TDP means thermal design power and that's what you are allowed to draw off the card. So usually, let's, let's say for example, you have a card which, which is allowed to consume 100 watt. Then if you increase the power target to 120, then it's allowed to consume 120 watt. Um, thus, the card can uh, increase the clock itself and also increase, uh, increase the voltage. So you can see in the screenshot, the VDDC, that's the core voltage of the card, is set to 0.9 volt, which is actually not really much. Um, the problem is that the card is already running into the power target of 120%, and um, the result is that it's lowering the GPU core voltage to around 1.9 volt and also limits the GPU core clock at 1900 MHz. So now, of course, 1900 MHz is not really cool if you want to overclock and if you're limited by the power um, limit. So we can bypass this limit by modifying the card a little bit using a liquid metal. This mod is very easy and uh, the risk is very low doing this mod. So here you can see a full shot of the GTX 1080. The 1070 PCB is very similar, so you can just use everything exactly the same for the 1070 as well. So underneath the 8-pin connector you can see this small resistor which I marked here and this is a shunt resistor. I already explained that in my GTX 1060 video. Um, if you run um, power over this uh, resistor then there is a small voltage drop across this resistor and there is a small IC on the PCB which is measuring this voltage drop and there is and uh, according to this voltage drop the IC can calculate the complete power consumption of the card. So now if we apply liquid metal on this small resistor, there is some power which can flow over the liquid metal directly and bypass the resistor. So it kind of bypasses the, um, the calculation and the result is that you lower the power target. So I used uh, Thermal Grizzly liquid metal, um, the conductor node for this um, video. I'm not so sure about uh, the chemical composition of other liquid metals, might be a little bit better, might be a little bit worse. You have to try that or just use the conductor out. So uh, in this video I um, applied the liquid metal using a small um, cotton swab. The, the cotton swab is already included in the product as well. So you can see it just uh, rubbed it across the resistor several times with a little bit of pressure and then you can see it starts to stick on the resistor. Uh, don't use too much, just a small layer. So even if this small layer um, helps to bypass, let's say 20% of the current, then you increase the power target by 20% and that's absolutely fine. So what happened after um, we applied the liquid metal? This is the same screenshot, and not the same screenshot, but it's the same system again. And again, I took a screenshot running Fermark. You can see the MSI afterburner on the right again. And I also increased the power limit there to 120% again. And then I set the core clock to plus 180. Uh, the thing is, before we had plus 220 and I tried to do that again, but it instantly crashed. And I was like, what, what is going on here? And then I noticed that the card was running at like 2100 megahertz. Um, that's just the result of the power limit mod, so the card has a lot more um, window to increase the clock and the voltages, so uh, I had a lot more clock than before, so I actually had to lower the clock in the afterburner to plus 180 to run a stable clock. So let's take a look at the GPU-Z sensor um, window on the top left. You can see now the GPU core clock is running at 2000 MHz stable, 
the GPU temperature increased to around 80, 80 degrees. 80 degrees is still fine, that's still okay. Um, considering that I'm running 100% fan speed, of course, the card is actually pretty hot now. So it would be perfect if you're using a water cooler or any kind of uh, third party cooler for this kind of mod. Uh, if you use this with a Founders Edition cooler, just adjust your fan curve to make sure that you're um, running decent temperatures and not hitting 95 degrees. You can see now the power consumption dropped to 93% TDP. Remember before we hit the 120% and now even with more clocks and more voltage, uh, we only have 93% TDP which is detected. So that's actually, it's not correct, but that's the, um, the TDP the IC is detecting. Also very interesting, the VDDC, the core voltage now increased to 1.0 3 volt and before it was 1.90 volt. So just by adding um, the liquid metal to the resistor you don't you increase the power target you have more room in the core clock and you also get an automatic uh, increasement of the core voltage which is just a result of the higher power target so the GPU controller allows the card to increase the GPU voltage. Of course you think this is just a synthetic benchmark again and actually I listen to your feedback and in the future I will do more game tests for you guys. So I started the, on the only game test I had for this moment was the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark which is running some game sequences and uh, you can see the benchmark is running in the background. The benchmark actually takes around 15 minutes I think, 10 to 15 minutes and it has um, a load on the GPU which is very similar to games. And you can see that the core clock increased even more and now it's 2062 megahertz. Um, that's just because the GPU load is a little bit lower than in the Fermac. You can also see the VDDC now decreased, uh, increased even more to uh, 1.05 volt which is almost the maximum the GPU controller is allowed to do. You can also see that the power consu consumption now lowered to like 73% TDP. Of course, um, I don't have FPS um, co um, comparisons for you now, but that shouldn't matter. I mean, it's you increase the clock from 1,900 megahertz to 2,060 megahertz. Uh, it's obvious that you increase FPS maybe 10%. Not so sure. Maybe you guys can test that and give me some feedback. That would be cool. So, of course, um, if something happens to your card and you have to RMA it, you might want to reconsider uh, uh, removing the liquid metal, which you should do. And it's actually quite easy to remove it. Just use a, a a some paper towel and wipe several times across the resistor. At the beginning, it's a little bit hard to remove the residues. But once you have almost everything removed, just use um, a little bit uh, more paper towel. And then you can see I also accidentally dragged some of the liquid metal across the PCB, which is also no problem. That doesn't change anything, just um, make sure you have some acetone with you to uh, apply it on the paper towel and then just clean the PCB and the residues of the liquid metal with acetone and then it's totally fine. Acetone is also fine for the PCB, you can actually put the whole card in acetone and it doesn't get damaged. So um, after using the acetone you can see the, ni uh, the card is nice and clean and the liquid metal is removed and this way nobody can detect what you did. Okay. So I hope I gave you a cool insight on um, GTX 1070 and 1080 power modding. Um, this should be quite helpful for a lot of guys because uh, GTX 1070 and 1080 BIOS modding is not so easy it seems. Uh, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't like it, uh, well, don't do anything please. <laughs> and uh, maybe give me some feedback. Um, maybe you want to see more videos like this, maybe different cards, just drop the feedback in the comment section. Otherwise, um, enjoy the rest of your weekend and see you soon.